Uh, Coach Ne, thank you very much for your time uh, and uh, for allowing me to interrupt your session. <laughs> it's very much welcome. Uh, I see you have uh, not a whole team, just a group of boys here. Uh, you are doing special training with them. Can you just take us through that particular session that you had? What was it about and what it seeks to achieve? Okay, so I had two of my midfielders, uh, my left wing and a striker to help with playing out. So from weekend's game, uh, our boys struggled to play, to play through the teams. So they always wanted to go around to the wing backs and to the striker or over the team. So we'd like to encourage the young boys at a young age to not be afraid to play out from the back because there's nothing to there's nothing heavy that you are really playing for. So it's it, the main goal is to improve their playing style. So today I, I brought together just these five boys to help them improve, help them understand what situations are dangerous, what situations are not. So if you can notice out of the session I had red cones, I had line cones, I had yellow cones. So the red cones were central. So it means when you go there and you play as a young kid, when you notice the red cones, you understand this is a danger zone. So this is why I play one touch, two touch. When you go to the lime area, it's lukewarm. So you can turn, but you need to scan first. But when you go to the yellow area, you are okay to turn as much as you like, take on people as much as you like and run forward. So the session today was really about that in general. It sounds very complicated. It is. Uh, do these boys at their age and the level of development understand this thing? Or is something that you have to do? over and over and over again until you get it. Yeah. Okay, firstly, it, it took me one and a half years for them to get a system fully without details on when to do that and just the system. So now, on a weekly basis, I think I take three days out of the week to teach them the different types of movements, double movement, run around, all these things that are involved in football plays. So it takes time in general, but when you are 13 and under, I don't make the details as much as they need to be as when you are 17 or so. So yeah, I, it, it depends. I give them in little doses, I think. Uh, we, we, we know about the condition of the speech, uh, the lack of resources in terms of, what, in terms of equipment. How are you able to still achieve these things, carry out these sessions with, in this condition of the pitch? And uh, I'm sure you want to have uh, those cones that are uh, human damage. Yeah, I don't exactly, know what they call them. Exactly. I've seen them. Many in cans, cars. yeah. <laughs> you want to have things like that, I think it becomes easier. easier. For, yeah. So, but given the conditions that you have, how do you go about it? And how do you try? Execute a session. I think it's it's the most testing phase of being a coach when when we speak about resources to use at training because uh, some kids don't want to come into to training to be a mannequin for the other kid to understand. So it becomes difficult for you to manage these kids in different areas. But I make use of what I got most of the time, and us as coaches around, we help each other. So if the other session, for instance, the one you spoke to before that, if they have footballing sessions, we borrow their cones, we borrow a couple of their balls when they are doing fitness sessions. So in general, we work together to build the kids around our area, if I can put it like that. It's difficult. I definitely love every resource I can get on earth. I definitely produce top class players. But we try, we try. You can't give up because they are in these areas. So you need to do what you need to do. Another topic that I like to discuss with coaches is uh, strikers. In South Africa, we strike with goals. Uh, I watch a lot of games. People, I don't know whether they panic in front of goals or some decision making, but we just don't score. Uh, we strike with goals. And that is not just a grassroots level. Yeah, every Even level. The PSN, we see our strikers striking to get 10 goals per season. And now, this is where it all starts at that level, where you have a pitch divided in two because yes. they are, you have to accommodate other teams. Uh, and therefore, you don't get what I think coaches would want in terms of a full pitch where they can practice shooting, decision making, those scenarios where they can yes. go. Do you think that the conditions at that level, the limitations that you have, contribute to what we see in the PSL in terms of who are scoring? And what challenges are you facing with regards to that? And what do you think as a coach at just level you can do given the limitations that you have? Mm. Good 
good question. <laughs> good question. Okay, firstly, if we can think about it, like really, really, uh, South African strikers haven't really topped the scoring charts in a while. Okay, there was, I think, Sikota. Sikota, the Free State Stars guys. Yeah, I think he was that guy that got two double figures, I think. But in general, striking is difficult because of what happens with the ball when the team has the ball. Because most of the time, if you can look at the chances they create overseas and the chances we create this side, the conversion rate makes sense for them because they, they literally plan out each and every scenario. They literally plan out each and every finishing decision that needs to be made. So the striker, I think at the age of 10, 11, they, are, they get taught different positions. For instance, Rooney's kid is already a striker at Manchester United. So definitely 2050, Rooney's kid is going to be running the block. Sorry to interrupt you. At this level, do some of these boys actually know their positions or we are still playing by the fight? But if you, it's like, it's like you, you try to put in a rhythm in their head. So for instance, you teach them three runs per, per month, for instance, as a striker. That, okay, when you want to make a run that you will receive a ball in the feet, you make a run like this. If you want to make a run that will make you receive behind the defense, you need to make a run like this. If you need to make a run that creates space for your opposition winger, you need to make a run like this. It is difficult for them to get it, but it's like school in general. If, if, if he's really committed with football and if it is his only option at times, because you can tell when school is not your thing and football is your thing, you need to show more commitment on that side. For instance, so it makes sense for you to be trying to learn a position at 12 years age, 11 years old. It's difficult, but it's possible, especially the striking areas. I could make uh, a, an example about the England team after they lost the World Cup with the Roonies, the Beckhams and all of that. They went and they were like, we'll forget and scrap everyone and then start with the young kids and we'll put them. I think they had the mandate of being top four in the 2018 Euros or 20, 2018, 19. So they put in eight years of work for these boys to come. And all these boys are like 22, 23, 25. So at what age did they really invest in them? 15, 14, 13. So it does make sense. As difficult as it can be, but it can make sense if we try. Uh, well, <laughs> that's good. It's Valentine's Day, isn't it? What are you doing here? I, I really love football. I date football with all my heart. I, I have a girlfriend. She understands that I need to be at the field. The rest happens after training. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my friend. <laughs>